Next up, I'd like to introduce Max Gatz, who is a teen entrepreneur, and he'll be giving a talk. <laughs> My name is Maximilian Getz, and I'm the president and founder of Robotics for All. And it is a 501c3 nonprofit organization which I founded. I would like to start by thanking Ms. Christina Sismas Gloria and the entire BEAM program for inviting me to speak here tonight. It's a real honor to be here. I'm going to tell you my story of founding Robotics for All. My story starts at Kidisons, which is actually a sponsor of BEAM. And I volunteered there starting in seventh grade, and it was a very natural place for me to start my volunteering journey because I've been on a lot of robotics teams in the past, and I've played with a lot of Legos. So Kidisons was a natural place for me to start volunteering. And that is where I discovered my love for teaching and helping others. After volunteering there for two years, in my ninth grade year, I decided to seek new opportunities. A search on volunteer match led me to reading parties. Reading Partners is a nonprofit organization out of lower income school, and I tutored students one on one on reading. And these were students who were behind on their reading level, and I was helping to get back into their standards for reading. And every week I would go in there and tutor Antonio. It was very such an impactful experience for me, and I learned two things out of Reading Partners. First thing, these students were extremely appreciative of my time. They all thanked me for being there. They all they weren't like no, I was reading. They were all really happy to see me there. But the second thing that was kind of shocking was the fact that they had never played with robotics or Legos. Antonio would tell me, oh, I've never played with Legos. And for me, having played with Legos since I was very young, that was a very puzzling, that was very baffling to me. So I thought, how could I help these students, other students like Antonio, learn robotics? So I contacted the principal of the school where I taught at Reading Partners, and I told her of my idea to, to, to start a robotics program at her school, and over the summer I developed the curriculum, and we started teaching there in, starting in November of 2017. And our first year was very successful, and I thought it made such a big impact in the lives of these students, and I also felt that I was also feeling really good. So my question was, how do I make this bigger? And that led me to found Robotics for All. The mission statement of Robotics for All is to teach robotics at schools with over 50% students coming from low-income families that will help them gain beneficial educational skills and career skills. That is the mission of Robotics for All. So here's some pictures from our first year of teaching at Mariano Castro Elementary School. A little bit about our classes. They are all after school, and we teach them using LEGO Mindstorms EV3 equipment. If anyone is familiar with that, it's a very it's aimed at kids these age, and it really helps them to teach robotics. That was it was a perfect platform for me. And as you can see from our pictures, all of all of our classes are group based. So we assign students to groups of three to four, and they each get one kit, one laptop, and we assign one high school volunteer to teach them. And this is it was really exciting, and we can teach from grades uh, first to fifth grade across three curriculums for seven weeks of teaching that we have developed. So expanding to a new school requires three things. Firstly, we need funding. Secondly, we need volunteers. And thirdly, we need to get to school. To get funding, I had a, I had a couple of methods. First off, I launched a fundraising campaign on GoFundMe. And I raised about $800 on GoFundMe that way. And then I found out about the Think Fund grant program through my participation on the Palo Alto Youth Council. And the Think Fund grant program is for any Palo Alto team who has an idea, they can go apply for a grant. Whether it be to start a nonprofit, start, or even host an event, Think Fund was a great program. So I applied for a grant, we awarded about $2,000 from Think Fund, and that enabled us to purchase the equipment to expand to a new school. A second thing that we have now is now that we have our own uh, nonprofit organization, we have our own bank account, so now we can collect donations directly on our website through PayPal. So the second thing we need to expand to a new school are the volunteers. And initially I asked those friends to help me volunteer, but as we're getting bigger, I kind of need to get more volunteers to volunteer for organization. So I, so that's why I went to volunteermatch.com and I set up a posting. We got a lot of interest from volunteers on volunteermatch.com. So that is how we get volunteers. Now the third thing we need is schools. And 
And the way we looked for schools, we researched the school percentage of students coming from low-income families, and then we reached out to all qualified schools in our target area. So once we do that, we get a couple responses, and that's how we find a new school. And our Palo Alto Weekly, on, Palo Alto online article that was written about us was really beneficial to us because it helped boost our credibility and made finding schools a lot easier for us. We used the funds to expand to two elementary schools. Firstly, Monteloma Elementary School in Mountain View, California, and secondly, Brophy Elementary School in Framingham, Massachusetts. And uh, Monteloma Elementary School is very close by, and, it, and that is where we started teaching first to second graders. So we still run classes there. Now the second one, which was Brophy Elementary School, I have a friend in the Massachusetts area, and I was talking to him about what I was doing, and he said, wow, I want to start a robotics ball class in my area. So I contacted schools in the Massachusetts area. He assembled a team of friends to volunteer, and we provided the funding, we provided the curriculum, and they started classes there in February. And next week, next Thursday, we have classes starting at Lakewood Elementary School in Sunnyvale, California. So we're expanding the robotics world program. We're making it so that more students are accessible to robotics education, and more high school volunteers are given the opportunity to serve back, because that is really impactful. Some statistics. According to the United States Census Bureau, there are 15 million students in the United States that come from families that are in poverty. So currently, we have served 141 students and 23 volunteers. We want to make that, we want to make the middle number higher. Our long-term vision is to build a platform, an online platform, that connects students directly with schools. We'll provide the funding, we'll provide the curriculum. All they need to do is teach. That is, that is our scalability model. That is how we're going to scale robotics for all. And our long-term goal is to get in 30 schools by the end of 2023. So this is a photo of the end, at the end of our session. We usually have a award ceremony where we thank the volunteers for their time. And we also, and we also uh, acknowledge the students for all the hard work they put into learning it. Because they stay after school. They put a lot of time into it. So I really like this time. And something that has really helped Robotics for All are all the dedicated and passionate volunteers in the organization. This would not have been done without them. They are so passionate. They, 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 they do so much for our organization. I'm so, we are so thankful to have all of them on our organization. And another thing that they do, we also have a board of directors. And all of our board of directors are, are, high school, are high schoolers. So this gives high schoolers real life business experience serving on a board of directors of a company. That's a very unique experience that we're so proud to offer to high schoolers. Oh, whoops. Can I go back? And to, I'd like to end with a little anecdote. Last summer, I went on a service trip to Cape Town, South Africa. And on the first day of orientation, they told us, you're not here, you're not here to help anyone. If anything, you're going to help yourself. And that was kind of confusing to me initially because I thought, I flew all the way to Africa to help other people. Why am I not there to help others? Well, of course, at the end of the trip, it really made sense. The real person who it impacted is myself. And the same goes for Robotics for All. Although we have impacted 141 volunteers, the students, the people that we've actually impacted are ourselves, and all the teams feel the same way about this. And this shows how much I've gained out of this experience. Not only about founding a company. I've learned teamwork skills, I've learned leadership skills. There are so many skills that you get out of founding a company that I would not have gotten otherwise. So I highly encourage anyone in the audience if they have an idea, to go for it. Teen entrepreneurship is possible. It's not only possible, it's just readily available. All of, there's so many mentors here that are willing to help you. It is such a great, impactful experience. And the BEAM program is the perfect program to get you started. There's so many valuable resources there. So thank you for your attention. speech on the valuable experience of pursuing an entrepreneurial goal. Um, Beam challenges students to think creatively about real problems and apply business concepts to their startup solutions. 